Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll focus on how to edit the grid records through the cell edit template options and the other editing modes available in Angular Grid. I will also explain about how to use the template driven ng forms to add and edit the grid records. Here I'll open my existing Angular application where the simple grid code is added and the local JSON data is assigned to its data source. Well, I assume here that you must be familiar with how to bind and work with the local and remote data on Angular Grid from my previous videos. In case if you are not familiar with it, please watch those videos and then continue to listen here to have better clarity. So now let's see the different kind of editing modes available on Angular Grid one by one. Before I start to work with the grid editing modes, in the app.module.ts file, I must import and inject the edit service and toolbar service from ej2 angular grids package and then within the app.component.ts file here I need to set the editing and toolbar options so the editing options is of type edit settings model and the toolbar options is of type toolbar items array so I need to import the edit settings model and toolbar items from ej2 angular grids package and then I have defined the editing options like allow adding, allow editing and allow deleting as true and I have set the edit mode as normal over here. And I have also included the basic toolbar options which is add, edit, delete, update and cancel. And then I need to assign these two options to the toolbar and edit settings property of the angular grid. So these are the two basic options to be enabled on the Syncfusion angular grid to start editing the records. Now you can view the output page with the editing options enabled on the angular grid. So when I start to edit the grid records by double clicking a row, you can notice the columns are being converted into editor components automatically. All these columns are displaying a simple text box and you can manually enter any of the values into the particular column. In case if I want to display the relevant editor components on these columns, there are totally 6 different kinds of built-in edit types which you can see here. Numeric edit, dropdown edit, checkbox edit, date picker and date time picker edit and string edit. So these edit types will add the corresponding components onto the edited column. Like if I set the edit type as numeric edit, then a numeric text box will be added onto the edited grid column. And the final option string edit will add the simple text box on the edited column which is the default behavior. So here in this example, I'm going to define a numeric edit type for this price and discount fields and the drop down edit type for this production field. So here within the app.component.ts file, I have defined the e-columns directive and defined each and every column of the grid data source in a separate e-columns subdirective. So here you can look onto the code where I have defined the edit type as numeric edit for this price and discount fields and the drop down edit type for the production field. Now when I double click on the record, you can see the editor components like drop down and numeric components that are displayed on the appropriate grid columns. I can also customize these components by setting its properties through the edit params option. Say for example, I'll show you the code how to set value for this drop down list when I double click on the record. For that, let me assign the drop down value within the params object and assign it to a variable of type iEditCell. To make use of this iEditCell, I need to import it from ej2 angular grids package. And then I need to assign this variable to the edit option of that particular column production. So let's see the output now. Now when I double click any of the record and you can see the drop down list showing the value Paris which I have set through code. I will show you the code snippet now. To format the price value displayed in this numeric text box in a currency format during the editing mode. So to format the price value now, let me set the number format through this params object and then I need to assign this numParams variable to the edit option of that particular grid column price. So let's see the output now. Now when I double click on a particular record, you can see the price value displayed in a currency format. In the same way, I can also format the values displayed on these grid cells by setting format options to the required columns. So to format the grid cells within the e-column directive, I need to set the appropriate formats for these price and discount columns. So I have set the currency format for the price column and the percentage format for the discount column. Now I am saving these changes 
and you can see the formatted price values and the discount values displayed on its appropriate columns. Apart from these six types of built-in edit types, you can also add custom components to the grid columns using the edit template option. Say for example, if I would like to add a new column to this grid, namely validity period, and I want to display the date range values here to display both the manufacturing and expiry date in a single column. So in this case, I can render the date range picker component for that validity column during the editing mode. So to use that date range picker component in my application, I need to install it first into my application. As the date range picker component is available within this ej2-angular-calendars package, so let me install the ej2-angular-calendars package through the npm install command and then I need to import and inject the date range picker module from ej2-angular-calendars package within this app.module.ts file. So first let me add an additional field validity to the grid columns. Now to add the date range picker component into this particular grid column, I may need to make use of the edit template option of angular grid. Also to pass value to this component, I may need to assign the data source field to this date range picker value. So here you can see that I have passed the validity field name. Also make a note of this modified grid data source where I have added the new field validity with the start and end date mentioned in it. So I have bind the validity field name to the value field of date range picker. Now I'll tell you why I have accessed this validity field using this order data instance. So before that, let me define the action begin event of grid which triggers before any of the grid actions. So here I have defined the action begin method which receives the argument of type save event args and to make use of the save event args I need to import it from ej2 angular grids package. Now I'll explain its purpose. Whatever components that I set to display on the edited column, it will get rendered only during the editing mode of the grid. So I need to dynamically set the value on those components when I double click on the grid records. Therefore within this action begin method, whenever I begin to add or edit a particular record, it will get triggered and I can retrieve the current record details from this args.row data and then I am assigning it to order data variable which I have declared in this app component class. So now the current data will be available in this order data variable which can be accessed globally. From this order data, I'll be accessing the validity field. So this will display the appropriate validity field value onto this grid column. Now there is another step on the action begin method Whenever I edit the value on the date range picker, I need to assign this edited value on the date range picker to the actual grid record. So during the save request type, that is at the time of saving the modified record, I am simply retrieving the validity field value from this order data object and assigning it to the original grid record. So the grid will internally process this value and display the modified value on the grid cell. So let me save this changes now. Now you can see the validity period field newly added to the grid and when I double click on a particular record, you can see the date range picker rendered on this particular edited column with the value provided to the validity field. Now when you view this validity period in the grid column, the date range text is not properly formatted and it is not clearly visible. So let me format this date column now. As I am going to display both the manufacturing as well as the expiry date, so I want this column to display the date range with the start and end date value. To display such values on the grid cell, I need to make use of the value accessor property of the grid. So for this validity field, I'll define the value accessor property and assign the variable value access. Now let me show you how to define this value access method. So here I have defined the value access method and within this method, I'm going to format the date range value. So the value of that validity field will be obtained through this value parameter and the field name will be obtained through this field parameter. So here I have defined the code and generated the date range format. Here the value parameter will receive the array of date values and in order to display them as a range value, I'm formatting both the date values separately by passing them into the date formatter method. Before I start to code for this date formatter method, I need to create an instance of internationalization library. So in order to make use of this internationalization, 
I need to import it from EJ2 base package and then I will define the date formatter method with the appropriate code to format the date values in year format. So now I save my changes and here you can look on to the validity period column just displaying the year range from 2020 to 2023. Now apart from editing the grid records with the help of different cell edit types, there are other three major editing modes which is inline, dialog and batch. So the inline is the default editing behavior of the grid. Whenever I double click on a particular record, you can edit the values inline. So let me show you the example. So you can see here the edit mode is set as normal. At this particular moment, when I double click on the record, I can change the values inline. In case if I set the edit mode as dialog, you can start editing the column values through this built-in dialog. You can also customize this built-in dialog with your own template design, which I'll focus after this very next topic. And finally, when I set the edit mode as batch, I can insert or edit any records and save those multiple changes in bulk to the server side in a single request. So here I can make changes on any of the cells. So the changes will be indicated with a green color and I can save all those multiple changes at the server side just in a single request when I click this update button. Now let me show you how to edit the grid records using the customized dialog. To have better clarity, I have removed the grid properties related to the cell edit type as well as the edit template which I have previously explained. So let's focus only on the customized editor settings now. Here I'll set the edit mode as dialog. Now I need to make use of the edit settings template. Before that, so let me import and register the forms module here in app.module.ts file. And now I'll start to define the ng template with the edit settings template reference. Within the ng template, I have defined the ng form. And now I need to define the required editors for all those grid fields whichever I have defined within this e-columns directive. Not only the fields defined within the e-column directive, but also I can define other additional columns within this ng-form template. And the only thing I need to make sure is whether those additional columns are present in the grid data source. Here in this example, I'm going to simply define the editors for the grid columns that are present in this e-column directive. So I have defined the simple text box for this order ID column as well as the product name column. And then I have defined the numeric text box for the price field and date range picker for this validity column. In the same way for the production column I have defined the drop down list and for the discount column I am defining the numeric text box. And for all those editor fields I have defined the appropriate ng model values as well as the name attributes. So the name attributes is a mandatory thing which needs to be defined for all the editors. And the another thing to note in this order id text box is I have used the isAd property over here to decide whether I should display this order id column in a disabled mode. To the ng model attribute of this order id text box, I have mapped the order id grid column so as to access its value during execution and assign it to the input text box. And in the same way for all other editors, I have assigned the appropriate grid column names. So the product name, price, validity, production and discount. As I am going to display a drop down list on this production column during editing mode, I need to set appropriate data source for this drop down list. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm defining a variable production city data within the app component class and retrieving the unique values of this production field from the data source. Here, to access the unique production field values from this data source, I have used the distinct method from data util. So in order to access this data util, I need to import it from EJ2 data package. So now I need to assign this production city data to the data source property of this dropdown list. Now at the time of saving the modified records through dialog within the action begin event, I'm simply retrieving the exact row data from this order data object and assigning it to the original grid records through this argstat data. So it will internally process this new object value and display the modified values on the grid cell. Before looking onto the output, let me add few CSS settings to the overall dialog as well as the ng form. Now when I try to run the output, you can see the console error. This is because I have defined the components numeric text box and drop down list over here within this template. 
To make use of these components within the template, I need to install it into my application first. So to make use of this dropdown list, I need to install the EJ2 Angular dropdowns package through npm install. Now to make use of this numeric text box, I need to install the EJ2 Angular inputs package. Now the packages are installed into my application. Now I need to import them inside the app.module.ts file. So I'll import the numeric text box all module from EJ2 Angular inputs package and date picker all module from EJ2 Angular calendars package and the dropdown list all module from the EJ2 Angular dropdowns package. Also I need to register them inside this imports array section. Now I'll save my application and run with the ng serve command. Now when I double click on the record, you can see the customized dialog getting opened and from here you can update any of the column values and save it. And if you want to explore more about the editing options available on Angular Grid, you can refer to our documentation page. Now let me summarize some of the important points which we have seen in this video. We have seen how to edit the grid records using the cell edit template options as well as the three editing modes available on Angular Grid. Apart from this, we have also seen how to edit the grid records using the template driven ng forms. Thank you for watching this video and if you find this video as useful, give a like and subscribe to our channel as well. Thank you.